Hello again, so this is me Aziz and welcome to my YouTube channel Applied Linguistics and English Language Teaching. Please guys, if you, re if you like the video, subscribe for more, press like and share it with your friends. Okay, so let's cut to the chase. Today's issue is going to be cross linguistics. That is the contrastive analysis hypothesis. So, we are going to deal with the contrastive analysis hypothesis. First of all, we need to know why it is called hypothesis. Why hypothesis? Basically, it is considered as a hypothesis because it is just an assumption. We can only predict the difficulties. Okay, there is this issue of prediction nothing is guaranteed 100% you can only predict or hypothesize that's the basic premise what is contrastive analysis in fact well contrastive analysis is like the winner comparison or contrasting your mother tongue with the target language okay for example comparing Arabic with English we see similarities and differences and then we hypothesize for example the elements which are similar in the mother tongue and in the target language as well will be easy to learn that's logical whereas those which are different will be difficult to learn okay so similarities will cause kind of successful learning whereas differences will pose a difficulty okay let's move to the claim one of the biggest claims in the contrastive analysis hypothesis it is claimed that the principal barrier to second language acquisition is interference interference here is a classical term it means negative transfer it is pejoratively used in this context it has some negative connotations if you like it is the negative transfer from the mother tongue to the target language it is believed okay it is again just a claim where there is no interference no difficulty would be predicted since a learner can positively transfer okay positively transfer there is a positive transfer construct from his mother tongue to the tar target language in other words you can positively transfer constructs elements anything sentence uh, not sentences just constructs and elements from your mother tongue and apply them in the target language in layman's words okay let me put it differently in plain language the elements which are similar will be easy to learn and the elements which are different will pose a difficulty let me now give you an example just for the sake of clarification for an Arabic learner of English the sound P will be difficult for him why because this element does not exist in Arabic it is new as we know in Arabic alphabets people do not have the sound P that's why people in the Gulf okay Egyptians from the e uh, people from the East generally they do not have this distinction between P and P that's why you will find an Egyptian speaking English kind of using B instead of P instead of saying barking he would say barking and though the issue here is that p and b in english are not allophones they are phonemes that is to say they are contrastive they cause a change in meaning if you say park and bark there is a complete change of meaning dogs bark but parking is related to cars cars okay that's what you will find people from Egypt making this mistake 
over and over and over. I don't know why, probably because it's due to fossilization. That's that's something we will deal with in error analysis. Anyways, so that was just an example to clarify the elements which do not exist in the in the mother tongue and they exist in the target language will pose a difficulty for learners. I hope it's very clear. Now we move to a procedure, okay? Whitman, 1970, provided a set of procedures to predict difficulty in second language acquisition. He provided basically four procedures, very straightforward. The first procedure is description. We describe the two languages, okay? We describe the two, do we call them? The two systems, if you may. We describe the two systems. Then comes selection. We select items which do not exist in L1 and exist in L2, and vice versa. We s now we move to selection of elements. Then we contrast them. We contrast those items which we have previously selected. And then comes the last procedure which is prediction. Again, prediction. Nothing is guaranteed. Then we predict what will be difficult and what is not. Mm -hmm. Such claim, uh, sir, I think it is important to note here that such claim is supported by the hierarchy of difficulty. So basically, guys, I'm not going to walk you through this hierarchy of difficulty because you can just look it up in the internet. There are thousands of explanations in the literature. Just type the hierarchy of difficulty contrastive analysis you will find thousands of explanations anyway I'm just going to provide you with the easy level and the hard level okay level zero no difference is present in both languages learners can easily transfer okay positive transfer for example in the case of vowels vowels are kind of there are certain vowels which are kind of said to be universal they exist in all languages so learners will just positively transfer those vowels transfer those those vowels from their mother tongues to the target language okay this will be very easy whereas in the level 5 which is supposed to be the very very hard one an item in the first language becomes two or more in the target language that's the highest degree of difficulty in the contrastive analysis of course for example the verb to be the verb to be becomes in spanish sir and estar and probably in french it becomes avoir et être that would be very difficult to learn for a learner because of this split okay now we move to the criticism okay this claim was held erroneous Okay, it is a fact. It was held to be wrong. The claim was kind of wrong. After a lot of studies, okay, people people who conducted research on the area of contrastive analysis came up with the conclusion that it is kind of wrong. We can't really rely on it. Interference is not the barrier in second language acquisition. Okay? Sometimes what they came up with that is the fact that sometimes elements which are believed to be very difficult are learned very easily and vice versa those which are supposed to be very easy to learn they were very difficult in fact however that does not mean I'm not implying that you should not do uh, contrastive analysis that does not mean that we cannot benefit from the studies of contrastive analysis hypothesis. Many of my friends or my classmates, they conducted research on contrastive analysis. It could prove fruitful. For example, you could conduct a research on your mother tongue. For example, if it is American English or Algerian Arabic, you can compare it to a target language and see what elements will be difficult and which will not be difficult will be easy in fact okay 
so i hope you guys enjoyed the lesson and grasped the concept of the contrastive analysis so in the next video um we are going to continue on this notion of cross cross linguistics basically the next video will be about error analysis okay you know interlanguage learner language and you know all everything that's related to error analysis so thank you so much for watching see you then thank you so much